said, you know, black people, y'all know something else, nigga, boy. I can't use the N word because that. Is that appropriate? <laughs> wait, I mean, wait, due, wait, is that appropriate? Due to the circumstances, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Oh, 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 you're going to get proper on me. But wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Nah, I'm going to get he real. He's going to get proper on I'm me. I'm about to get but real. But he don't want me to sit for fashion. I'm about to get real grammatically correct. Right grammatically now. correct. <laughs> But he want me to fit like a whole dude out here in these streets. And uh, but he gonna be proper. Okay. Yeah. My okay. show. This show show. My show. Okay. I mean clearly, uh, you know, he man. Faces when I'm balling like my get in my face and I'm a fed away. I feel like a goat, I had to pave the way. Ran out of steps, we had to make a way. Back in throwing oodles in a mic all the way. Welcome to another episode of Back in the A with our Urban Central. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Mrs. I gotta check the numbers. I gotta do the paperwork. The money behind the money, Miss Tony Smith. How you got your leg like that? <laughs> Tony, hey, introduce yourself to the people. Let them know what you do. Give them a little bit of. Alright guys, so Greg asked me why I had my leg like this because he wouldn't let me sit proper, okay? So I'm just gonna kick it on his couch. So we kick it on Greg's couch. No, uh, he already introduced me. I'm Tony. Uh, some of you guys know me, some of you don't. Um, I am, like he said, the money behind the money. I run a lot of black businesses. Um, I'm behind a lot of influential black businesses that you guys know that that are ran here in the city by a lot of big names. So I am a behind the scenes type of person. Um, I handle all the paperwork, all the movements in the city. So if it's popping in the city, I'm more than likely, I'm attached to it. I'm not a in, in the, let me see, how can I say it? I'm not an in your face type of person. I like to move where the money go, but I'm also behind the scenes. So if it's working, I'm attached to it. So when well, my show got real popular because I interview a lot of strong black women. Tony is a big influence on what I do. She's always, it's been more of a family situation when they adopted me into the situation. But Tony has like a very dope story in the point where, where she came from, how she does things, and how she moves in the boardroom with the big dogs and she's still a big dog. You know what I mean? So, you know, let y'all let. The whole purpose of this show right here is to show y'all that the behind the scenes is sometimes not what you expect because you see, as you see, she is one of them. She comes in and beats herself. I ain't one of those. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> with just meeting her, her personality, and then when you figure out like what she's done, how she's done, I'm going to let her give a bit of her story. So, what I do on my show is I give people a chance to tell their story, the start, the finish, and then we got to talk about Atlanta back in the A. So, you know, give them a rundown of how you started, where you came from, what you did. Okay. So, I am originally from Atlanta, born and raised, West Side to be exact, Bankhead Hollywood Road. Um, so, I'm just a little, I always, my tag is a little West Side girl with big ambitions. Um, I, I went through a lot in life, but, you know, it brought the hustle out of me. I'm 100% hustle. If it's out there to get, I'm going to go get it. Um, I bump heads with a lot of influential people in the city. So, you know... First time meeting me, they like my personality, they like that I'm a go-getter, and they like that I'm a female. Um, I didn't, quote unquote, sleep my way to the top. I put my money where my mouth was, and I made my money work for itself. So that's how I started to move around the city, started to gain, um, not so much as popularity. I'm not a big, I don't really care about the whole popular stat part of it. I'm more so of actions speak louder than words. So my work provides and speaks for itself. Um, boardrooms, I, I like to refer to myself as corporate thugging. Uh, I'm going to steal Jeezy tag um, when it comes to corporate thugging. I can move with the best of them. Um, I can put on a suit, we can go in here and we can get some money. Or I can stand outside and we still can get some money. So either way, I'm, I'm always about the money. I'm going to get to the money. Uh, and I'm going to help your business get to the money. I started my own business consulting firm. So I help a lot of small businesses, a lot of black businesses thrive uh, here in the city. Um, I also start outside the city as well. So I go from LA to Florida. Um, I have clients pretty much everywhere. I work for some of the big name um, 
clients here in the city also. So if you got a business, you don't know where to start, you don't know what to do, you need help, HR, hiring, money, you know, any type of advice, that's what I do. I'm kind of a one woman show. Um, I don't have a team. I get out, I get my hands dirty, and I kind of do it myself. She's a one woman show for real, cause she's one woman with a book bag. You see her with that book bag and that laptop. She coming to handle some business, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> So you, you keep on hearing like you you, you hearing on who you work with. Who can you speak on that you helped start and done done work with? So necessarily help I can't necessarily say help start it because a lot of these businesses were already in the works, right? So um, I kind of was passed around word of mouth. I worked with um, some of the people I work with. They kind of passed me along to other people. So I am uh, in the financial industry banker financial advising that's kind of what my territory is um, once i started meeting those clients those clients started passing me to own so i've worked with um geez of course everybody know magic so i've worked with magic um one of the bigger names in the city um i won't necessarily mention his name but he owns a lot of the clubs a lot of the restaurants here in the city too i don't like to put them on front street however if, so if you know you know uh let me just say that if the you know you, right so if you know you know we, we we move around we we don't really necessarily like to be seen we just like to be heard so every everything that you know a lot of these clubs in atlanta that's been stationed in atlanta uh restaurants i've pretty much been behind it i kind of run it uh work with a lot of record labels um a lot of your artists, I use a, you know, I refer to myself as, you know, your favorite artist, favorite banker, because that, that's what I do. When they need the money or they need it to go, they come to me. So if it's big in Atlanta, more than likely, I'm a part of it. Now we got that part out of the way. Since she was so discreet, we're going to leave that at that. <laughs> Let's talk about growing up in Atlanta, bankhead <laughs> stories, Hollywood stories. Yeah. You was in the era I was in, the Freak Neat era, yeah. growing up, the but clubs. I Let's talk about those stories. Listen, Atlanta, I'm, I'm a real Atlanta native. A lot of people, when they when they talk about like skating rings, for instance, they always talk about jelly bean. But my era was Screaming Wheels. Screaming so if wheels. you're from Atlanta and you know about Screaming Wheels, you're from Atlanta. And it wasn't metropolitan, it was Stuart Ave. So that's what I reference to. Um, but that's that's pretty much what it is. Growing up in Atlanta, I was. MBK? Now my mama didn't let me go to MBK either. See, so my mama really wouldn't let me go to a lot of these places. So what happened was I used to sneak over my well, not sneak, at my dad's house and my stepmama and I got older sisters. My older sisters used to take me to all these places. So they stayed in Great Home. So you know I'm kind of Great Home native too. Um, so I was in Great Home. So that's why I was going to screaming wheels and things of that nature. So I was I was always out. But from Bankhead, uh, Hollywood Road, Lookout, you know that was my uh, went to West Fulton. Um, if you're from the west side, if you're in Bankhead, and you know about Junk Harry, uh, Etheridge, so that's that's kind of where I, I made my little my moves in the A, so to speak. Uh, the little snowstorm we had, what was it, ninety, some somewhere around ninety two? It was a little blizzard. Yeah. I never forget. We was uh, we couldn't get to the store, and well, we stayed on top of the hill, so we had to walk from the hill. And anybody know? Like I said, if you're from Atlanta, you know what Bankhead and uh, Hollywood Road split. It used to be. A store called Big Star, right there in the middle. We had to walk all the way from Hollywood Brook all the way to the Big Star just to go to the grocery store. So that's kind of, you know, if you're from Atlanta, it's, it's certain things right there by Gun Club. That's that's where I'm from. The A was fun back then. I don't know what's going on now. However, did you get to hit the bounce? Did I? What? They don't know about the bounce. You gotta know to know. He the gonna ask me that I hit the bounce. Oh man, let me tell you, I worked. I worked, what did I work? I can't remember where I worked. I, I worked at Six Flags. Six Flags was my first job. That's another thing. If you're from the west side, Six Flags was always your first job. Um, but I worked and I'll never forget going to the bounce. And I had just got paid and I put my money in my pocket. And one of y'all little dusty sons was trying to dance with me, right? So of course, you know, I'm gonna dance because you know, that's what we gonna do. And he took my money out of my pocket. I'm talking about, and I had got paid, paid too, y'all. In the bounce. And that was probably like my first and last time going to the bounce. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really with it after then. But being an Atlanta native, I went to school here. I went to college here. Um, I went to Morris Brown. Oh started at Morris Brown. Um, left Morris Brown because, you know, we had a little financial difficulties. But I'm always a brown knight. I'm going to be all the way 
Uh, I graduated from Clark Atlanta. Um, so I kind of merged into a Panther, but you know, Atlanta, I'm, I'm Atlanta. Been here my whole life, born and raised, raised my kid here. So, you know, we, I'm Atlanta native. Atlanta's, Atlanta fun, was fun. I gotta say, we gotta talk about Central Station. Everybody from Atlanta got a Central Station story. I don't, because what? I went to Central Station one time. One time. Mm -mm, one time. <laughs> it was one time for me. Listen, I, I can't, mm -mm. first of all, I didn't like crowds. Uh, it was way too many people, and you know, I was one of those, um, damn, why she to look like that? She me. I always kept a mug on my face, right? So I was unapproachable. Nobody ever wanted to talk to me. So I went to Central Station one time. It was hot. It was crowded. Uh, yeah, it was too It was it was too much for me. So no, Central Station, I don't have no Central Station doors. You talking about Morris Brown, so yes. my friend, my big friend was a Morris Brown football player. I didn't go to Morris Brown, but okay. I went to Morris Brown. I was already, Everybody went to Morris Brown if you went at Morris Brown. I was already in his dorm room doing what I yes. had no business doing. Shout out to Morris Brown. Listen, one of the best AU, best schools on the AUC. The best friend the, I had at Morris yes. Brown, that's when uh, Give Me The Light was real high. Okay. And they had the reggae night yep. in front of the gym. Homecoming, we had oh. an actual concert. Sean Paul, listen, Morris Brown, everybody wanted to come to Morris Brown. Everybody's been like, oh, Morris Brown, so ghetto, y'all hood. But everybody was over at Morris Brown. Yeah, we had fun. Some of the biggest names um, came out of Morris Brown, too. Timo from Goody Mob with the Morris Brown. A lot of people. And we had one of the best bands in the land, also. So, oh, yeah. Morris Brown was awesome. Was the awesome. AU Center Pier, you could not. It was a Atlanta thing to ride through the AU Center. Get your car straight, ride through the AU Center before they blocked out the clock right there for you. Right, they blocked that out because you had we had Meat Market Wednesdays, Thursdays. It was either Thursday or Wednesday, one of them. I'm telling my age, y'all, so if I don't remember it, don't don't tell on me. Um, but we had Meat Market. I remember sitting in front of the towels, T.I. Roll down the street. I've actually, I worked with him as well. Um, with, with some of his, his people in his camp, let me say that. Uh, he rolled down the street. I never forget. He had a T-top Monte Carlo, hanging out in Monte Carlo, riding down the street. It was, it was so. Morris Brown was. If you wanted to, to just have a good time, she family me, oriented. She telling me I should call Jackie on the street. I, I am. Um, I, yeah. I like old schools. Uh, Chevelle is gonna be one of my favorites. Uh, the Gibbs seventy to be exact. So you know, I uh, love cars. Uh, I got a lot of. A lot of good people in my life who are really into cars, so you know, I kind of was raised in it. My dad brought me up in it. Um, so yeah, cars are my thing. Old school though, gotta be an old school. I'm what not you, really into the we, modern. We go, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real painter right now. So what you were doing at SWAT day last week? Okay, so what happened was, okay. <laughs> I Tell pulled, me what I pulled you know. up. Tell me so what SWAT, SWAT Day, Southwest Atlanta, Campton Road. I'm not from there, but it's around the corner from where I'm from. So it's just a time where everybody get together. Everybody you ain't seen, you ain't seen. I think it's what Theral. People went to Theral. Um, West Lake. All, all in that yeah. area. I, I that. wasn't necessarily. Road, yeah, that wouldn't be my little. Day, yeah, point, yeah. But I, I did slide through because of course it was cars. Um, you know so. I had to go through the show my face, been a little calm, you know, say what's up to a couple of people. Well, and, the you the know. funny part about it, what kind of car she drives, she drives a jacked up Jeep. I do, I do she drive a Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a thug, okay? You know, I just, um, I do, I drive Jeep, I love my Jeep. I'm not a part of no Jeep club, so don't nobody hit me on Instagram for my ride with the Atlanta Jeepers and all that stuff. I, I Once again, as you guys heard, in the beginning of the interview, I am a one woman show. I move by myself. I don't do crowds. I don't like crowds. I don't have to be a part of something. I ride by myself. So I'm not a part of any Jeep crowds or anything like that. But I do drive a Jeep. Um, I like my Jeep. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, I like it. Greg always talk about me because every time he see me, first thing he do is look down at my feet. So he and said I got funny feet, collection. but my shoe game is on point. A hell of a shoe um, I ha I, another thing I do, I have my own business. I have my own clothing line business. Um, so it's called Girls Rock Sneakers too. Um, a lot of, you know, it's a lot of influential girls that rock sneakers and people just really don't know about it. Everybody always talk about the guys and the sneakerheads of the guys, but I'm a true sneakerhead at heart. Um, I don't really care for the heels, y'all can have that. I put them on when need be. If I gotta go in the room and move and talk about some money, then you're gonna see me in some heels. But other than that, I go in the room in some sneakers and I get the same respect in that room with some sneakers out in the heels. So sneakers are my passion, they my life. Uh, don't ask me about no numbers, what Jordan numbers this is. I don't care about all of that. All I know, I like them, you ain't got them, I'm going to get them, and I'm going to put them on and make them work. Listen, man, 
I always do this one. Well, most of my interviews are so personal, so I got to add the personal part. I want to thank you for just the opportunity you put me in. Because get what? When I first started hosting the area for Tony was going to fire me. I was. <laughs> okay, who was that? Hey, she's going to right. fire me. But listen, man, and I, and I appreciate you for seeing my ambition and investing time in me. Ladies, the whole reason for this interview is to show you that we got strong black women that do different things to get money, and and they move different. This interview is very personal to me because I love this lady like a family member, like a sister. As always, this is our Urban Central. We're back in the day with the one and only Tony Smith. Appreciate you, baby. You did good. You got comfortable. See, that's good, man.